In this video, I'm going to be talking about detecting collision events in P5 play. In past videos, we talked about setting the colliders for our sprites to respond differently when they hit. Uh, and in this video, we'll be talking about how to execute code when those events happen. So I have this example here. Of a, we have a player sprite in the middle, a box sprite here on the left, and a circle sprite uh, on the top there. And I'm just going to create write some code that will move this player sprite, allow us to move this player sprite um, using keyboard input. Now I'm going to reset both the x and the y velocity before I do anything in case there's any left over, and have a if statement respond to key kb pressing and respond to the a key for moving left, where I want to just set my x velocity to be in the negative direction negative two, and then we want to do else for our D key in the positive direction, else for our the W key, and we'll have Y in the negative direction, and then finally, else if for pressing the S key, where Y should be moving in the positive direction. So this should allow us now to move our sprite uh, using the keyboard. And if I hit one of these objects, they just kind of fly off uh, like you might expect because by default, the physics engine is baked into P5 play. Now, um, you know, one thing you might notice is that there's some rotation that happens when collisions occur. If you didn't want that, you can just easily kind of reset the rotation for the sprites that you want to not rotate to zero every frame. So we can just say rotation equals zero for the player sprite and the box sprite as well. So now when they hit each other, you shouldn't get any of the, um, you know, that rotation that happens. Now, one thing you notice, like when I hit this, it just kind of flies off in outer space and it ju just keeps its momentum. Um, you might want that to slow down, uh, in which case you can just change the property of that box sprite that you're pushing. Um, there is a property called drag and you can set that to be uh, a number and you know you can play around with values to see what what would work for you but um, one should slow it down pretty significantly so now when you push it it'll slow down um, and uh, not just fly off into outer space um, what else so uh, let's now make it so that you can go and collect that coin that sprite is something that you can just kind of pick up um, and to do that what we can do is um, there is a collides function for all sprites where you can say whatever sprite that collides and then pass in another sprite, put that in an if statement, it'll return true when that collision happens. And similar to how pressing, there's a pressing and a press is, there's a collides and a colliding. So first let's try to see if we can detect a collision between our player sprite and that circle sprite. So we're gonna check in our draw just as we're doing for checking input. And I'm gonna say if um, player sprite dot collides, and collides is just going to happen one time, like colliding is would be uh, if they're kind of, um, if they're like continually colliding, colliding, collide, collides will happen one frame, uh, one frame only. So again, th that collision being between player sprite and whatever we pass in here. So if we say circle sprite, and then have some curly brackets for a statement to get executed when the player sprite is that first frame when the player sprite is colliding with the circle sprite. Then we can just say circle sprite dot remove, and it should now uh, be able to go pick up that um, that circle. There's also something called overlaps, um, which should actually just kind of get rid of any. Um, you know any physics collision that happens if it, if it were to if you were to kind of see some kind of uh, physics collision happen as well. Uh, we can also show how colliding works. So let's say we wanted to push our uh, our box around um, and show that collision when they're touching that it turns a different color. So maybe our box sprite is initially a color of oops color equals color initially white and then when we collide so when the player is colliding uh, 
colliding with our box sprite. Let's change the box, box sprite's color to red. So box sprite dot color equals color 255 comma zero comma zero. So now, as long as this, well, we'll see what happens here. So it turns red and it stays red even though I'm not colliding because it's just gonna, I'm setting it to red, I'm never changing it back. So I do need an else statement here. Um, spell it correctly and then change this back to white when it's not, when colliding is false when it stopped touching the box. So now, right? So now when I'm when I'm touching it, it turns it's, it stays red. And I, when it stops, it, it uh, turns back to white because of this colliding versus uh, the collides that I had here or overlaps. Um, you know, and we could also do things just like uh, make this. This could you know be easily be a game um, where maybe you have to push the box into the circle and have the circle disappear as part of this. Uh, so instead of having this be the player sprite, if we just say the box sprite overlaps circle sprite, and then we'd have to push this box into the circle for uh, that to that event to happen. So that could be, you know, you're, there's a bunch of circles and you're pushing this box, box around to collect them. Um, so those are the basics of using overlaps, overlapping, colliding, uh, and the collides function to respond to events and uh, associated with collision.